Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello and welcome to Book Chat. I am your host, Arthur Vivian e. Moore. Hope everyone is having a lovely weekend. Hope you're having a great day. Um, I don't want to hold you for too long today, so we're just going to go ahead and get right to the show. Okay, so the title of today's show is Independence Day, and the topic is Breaking Publishing Traditions. Well, you know, I know that everybody is traditional in one way or another. Um, you know, whether it's, um, where you have your holiday meals, um, you know, where you attend church, where you attend college, you know, all of those things, how you raise your kids. We're big on tradition, but you know, sometimes we have to break tradition, um, especially if it's going to benefit us in some way, you know, cause when we think of freedom, you know, that's a form of independence and one's thoughts usually center on escaping from some form of bondage or the feeling of being tied to a particular situation or party um, that they no longer want to be associated with. Publishing bondage, because that's the kind of freedom we're talking about today, is how many other authors and I, uh, myself, view traditional publishing. Now, I'm not bashing conventional publishers by any means, um, but what I'm merely saying is there are different ways to fulfill one's publishing goals. For clarity, I want to clear up some misconceptions about what DIY publishing means. Just in case you were confused, I want to fix that for you. So first, let's not get it confused with small press, independent press, vanity press, and pay to publish. None of these are DIY publishing uh, entities. Still, they are not part of the traditional uh, publishing, but offshoots or alternative publication. Um, so, you know, when you think of, um, the ones that I just mentioned to you, um, the vanity press and the small press and, and, and things like that. Um, all of those, all of those are, um, entities or publishing companies where, um, you still have to pay someone to do the work for you, um, as far as formatting and, and all of that stuff. And, you know, you still have to pay them as if, you you were picked up by a traditional publisher and they were um you know paying all of these uh th- these um charges and and things that are incurred uh during the publishing process for you so all that stuff is still coming out of your pocket you may not be associated with a traditional publisher but if you are still dealing uh with one of those that I just mentioned to you then you you're still uh paying someone to do it for you and DIY is the complete opposite of that You know, um, so like I said before, all of the above publishing uh, venues, they require hiring someone to publish your work in comparison. DIY publishing is an entirely different brand of publishing. And I can't say that enough. And if you genuinely want to break free of traditional and off brand publishing, DIY is the way to go. Not to say DIY is for everyone, and especially if you're unprepared to do it all. After all, that is the definition of DIY. But if you're motivated and driven enough to eliminate the middleman and take charge of your writing career, uh, then this is how you do it on those terms or on these terms. Self-publishing has evolved and many authors are beginning to catch on to the DIY revolution um, that is so widely preferable to traditional publishers. Now, I understand if you are one of those individuals who would instead take their chances going the traditional route, I commend you, first of all. But there's nothing wrong with seeking publications with a bigger brand. Um, it's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, some people, they they, they like um, being able to submit to publishing companies. And then you have so many uh, publishing companies now that are allowing uh, first-time authors uh, to submit their work to them. And, you know, 
if they if they like what you got, then you know they will they'll you know send you a um you know a, a, a an offer to you know to take your work and to publish it for you. You know they'll strike up a deal. You'll get a publishing contract with them, and it may not be you know as great as some of the major publishing companies where you know you get a sign on bonus and and you know and all of those great perks that go along with that. But for the most part, you know you get to say, well, my work has been published, you know, by a traditional publisher. So you know you get bragging rights, and that's nice. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you prefer to do it yourself, you know that way you get to keep all the profit. You know, the, the, you, you, of course, there's going to be, um, you know, expenditures because with anything um, that you're taking on yourself, you, you know, you you should expect to come out of pocket, you know, for for most, if not everything. You know, there are some ways where you can get around spending a lot of money. You know, if you're if you're really good with advertising or, if, you know, you, you're really good word of mouth, if you can do that and you have, have a lot of friends uh, who are willing to, um, you know, to help you out that way to, um, you know, to, um, uh, tell everybody about your book, to hype it up for you. That's good. You know, you're very fortunate if you have those people in your corner that would do that. And most people do, you know, and, um, so that's, it's just something to think about, but you know, in all of that, why not build your own brand? You know, I understand the market is saturated with all types of authors, uh, whether traditionally published or otherwise, but, for those who seek independence to do things their way and control the narrative, DIY is a viable option. And I can't stress it enough. Now, I know there are pros and cons to everything, and it's up to the author to decide which is a better fit for their publishing goals. Still, if you're fed up with rejection letters and all the steps associated with traditional publishing, then DIY is the way to go. Even if you still desire traditional publishing, DIY is a great starting point for getting your feet wet before moving on to traditional publishing. Um, I read all the time and I read a lot of books that are, uh, they've, they've been written by self-published authors. And let me tell you something, <laughs> there is no difference um, as to whether these books were self-published or if they came from mainstream publishing, you can't tell because the books are well-written. Um, they've been edited, you know, to a T, everything, the packaging, all of that, you know, and, and in some ways, self-publishing uh, books look way better than those that uh, that, that go through, tradi through the uh, traditional process. You know, I've seen some of the book covers on traditional process books and I'm like, D who did this? You know, it's like so generic. But, um, you know, with, with DIY, you can, you can put your own little spin on it. You can put your own touch on it. You can hire someone to actually um, do your book covers for you. And there are so many great ones out there um, that, that, uh, that, that, uh, they, they pitch to, uh, independent, um, authors, um, who, um, want their book covers done and they want nice book covers done, you know, book covers that actually fit the title or fit the story of the book. So, um, you know, you, you, you want to look into it. I don't, I didn't go out there today to research any of those. I wish I had it so I could have get, uh, given you, um, some of those names, but, um, but I didn't do that today. And so I don't want to call out any that I haven't researched, um, because that, that may not be right. So I won't do that, but it's just something to think about. Um, you know, because like I said, you are responsible, uh, for everything that's involved as a DIY author, um, you know, or a DIY publisher. Um, you know, you write the book, you get it edited, and, you know, and now with Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and uh, Google and um, um, what's the other one? Smashwords, all of those, you know, they have they when you put your work in there, um, it automatically formats it for you. So that's one of the great features of being able to publish your books, um, you know, through D through the DIY process. Because, you know, there are so many applications that are out there now to help you, uh, you know, uh, before, if you want to self-publish, then you still had to hire someone um, to do the formatting of your books for you. And they do it for the, for the e-books, and they also do it for paperback and for the, um, uh, the paperback and the hardcover books as well. So, you know, basically, you know, if you don't already have a, a, a book cover for your book, 
previously designed, then, you know, you can just use one of theirs. And, and like I said, some of them are very generic looking, but, um, if you, you know, if you just spend a little time with, and that's a whole nother show within itself book cover. So we might come back to that one day, but, um, you know, if you spend a little time with it and just experimenting with, uh, you know, with what you want your book cover to look like, I'm pretty sure you can come up with something, you know, pretty spectacular. And, uh, you know, there are, you can either pay someone like, um, Shutterstock. Uh, I mean, you, you go on to Shutterstock. They have a lot of, of, uh, pictures that are free. Um, they are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ugh, can't think of it. I hate when that happens, but anyway, um, and, and most of them, um, you, you know, you just pay a set price for it. You know, if you see a photo that you want, you can get it for like maybe eight or nine dollars or something. But stock photos that, uh, that, that they don't have, um, <laughs> it came to me and it went again. Maybe it'll come back before the show is over with. But anyway, and then there's another one that you can go to, uh, let me get that one pulled up because I can never remember, um, the name of it, but it is, hold on. Just bear with me just a moment. I promise I'm going to have it for you. Uh, what is it? Unsplash. Yes, Unsplash. Uh, all of the photos out there are free. And, I mean, they have a huge assortment of images um, that you can choose from. And, and they're they're all free. And all they ask for is that you give the, um, the, um, um, the photographer... Uh, or whoever owns the rights to the pictures, you know, just give them a shout out, let them know you love their work and whatever. Um, you know, let them know you appreciate being able to use those, those photos that they have out there for you. Um, you know, then you can use them for free. Um, and then to, like I said, again, on the, um, for the shutter, for the shutter stock. And there are plenty more out there too, where you can go out there and get those stock photos and, um, and, you know, just pay the price for them which is not very expensive at all. And, uh, you know, and, and make yourself, uh, if you have the right tools, you can make your own, uh, um, uh, book covers and it's, it's not hard to do, um, at all. I think a book brush or something like that. Um, I know there's canvas, but I think the book brush is better than the canvas. Um, they're a book cover maker, um, apps and the, the book brush is, is a very good one. So, um, you might want to go out there and check it out. Um, they have a free, um, one that is free, but you don't get as many features with that one, um, as you do with the ones that you pay for. And it's not expensive either. You can get it for like, I think $8 or something a month, um, because it opens up all of these, these additional features that you can use, um, you know, that makes, I mean, the great, the greatest looking book covers, 3d book covers, you name it, you know, um, they, they have it. So it may be something that you may be interested in that you definitely want to look into, but anyway, you know, DIY is a great way to pitch your work to the same audience of readers as traditional authors. And if for any reason is not for you, then you can always switch venues. No one says that every book you publish has to be DIY. You know, if you want to do your, if you want to do your first work, I said, DIY, I didn't do that. And, and here's the great thing about that. Even if you do do a DIY and then you, later you want to pitch it, um, to a publishing company, you can do that because, you know, you're not using an agent, you know, most publishing companies, companies, uh, don't want work that's been, uh, uh, pre-agented, agented. I think that's how you said. Um, so, um, but if you just self-publish and, you know, you want to submit that book to a traditional publisher, then you can still do that because you still own the rights to that work. No one else, you know, is, has been assigned to that, but it's still your work. You own it 100%. And that's another great thing too, because with uh, traditional publishing companies, you know, if you sign a contract with them, then, then, you know, for as long as that contract is valid, then they, they own your work, you know, whether, whether they publish it or not, they own it and there's nothing you can do about it. So, because you agree to it when you, um, when you go on contract with them. So that's another thing to think about too. Um, and you sort of lose your voice, um, with, uh, with traditional publishers, because if they're putting all the money up front, then they have basically all the say, I mean, you have some limited input, but you know, but the last word on it, the final word on it, it 
will be theirs and you can believe that. So if you are like me and you like being in control of situations, not to say that I am a control freak because I'm not, but I like having my hands uh, on my work. You know, I want to be involved with it because I am the one that came up with the conception. And so I've seen it from beginning all the way to the end. So that's important to me. And I don't want to lose sight of that. You know, I don't want to have to make a whole lot of changes, unnecessary changes, um, just because, you know, they're only going to pay for a certain amount of words. So it's a lot to think about, you know, so maybe you don't want to rush into it. Maybe you want to research it a little bit more. And I would suggest you do that and see if it is for you. Um, if not, then you know, by all means, do what you've been doing. But regardless of which publishing route you choose, know that there are alternatives to the norm. Just remember, independence comes with responsibility. Take your time, do the necessary homework before you make any decisions. Keep in mind, there are many avenues for arriving at the same destination destination on the road to freedom. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. And I want to make sure that I give you these URLs before I let you go, because I want you to be able to stay in contact with um, the show book chat and also uh, to reach out to me on uh, social media. Uh, Of course, the first one is Spreaker and it is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian e. Moore. You can follow me like me on Facebook. Um, you can just type in my name, author Vivian e. Moore or author E.H. Shepard and my Facebook pages will come up. You can also follow me on um, Twitter. That's God's Property 46 and Instagram is God's Property 51. Um, if you want to go to my uh, lovely website, uh, you can um, do that at uh, um, authorvivianemore.com uh, just type it in and it should take you to it. Um, it's HTTPS actually colon four slash four slash www.authorvivianemore.com or author eh shepherd.com. All right. And two, if you, uh, read my blog site, that is, uh, HTTPS colon four slash four slash vivianemore.blogspot.com. And, uh, and, and if you, if you, uh, don't listen or get a chance to listen to the live show, you can always get the recorded episodes each and every day if you choose, but especially on Saturday. And uh, of course you can listen to it on Spreaker, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, YouTube, and SoundCloud. All right, so those are all of the places where um, you can keep up with the show, keep up with the happenings um, that is taking place uh, on a weekly basis. We're still striving for that goal, folks. We still have another week to go um, before uh, the end of the month. And, you know, if we get close to it, we're still going to celebrate because this is my third year uh, doing book chat. So I'm going to celebrate regardless because it's a milestone for me. I've <laughs> Three years I've been doing this, you know, this one show a week. And, and, and I, and I must say, I'm proud of my um, tenacity. Uh, I'm proud uh, of myself that, um, you know, that I, I kept going. So hopefully, you know, I can continue to, to go strong, uh, with book chat with your help. And I do thank you uh, for listening because, you know, you inspire me, um, as much as I want to inspire you. And so that motivates me to keep going, to keep coming up with, uh, with good shows, um, every single Saturday, uh, to keep you, um, engrossed, to keep you um, in the know of the publishing world and, and all of the things that are taking place. So I thank you. And remember tomorrow is worship day. Every day should be worship day, but Sunday especially. And remember guys to always invite your friends and your neighbors and family members and children to listen into the word because it's very important. It's so vital right now because we all need um, to hear word from the Lord. We do. Um, you know, if you watch the news, it is depressing you know, to just to see what's going on. So, um, you know, and I, I have empathy for everyone. And so it affects me greatly, you know, when I watch the news and, and, and just see the, the horrible things that's taking place. So I need to be rebooted, to be recharged on Sunday, you know, from all of the things that I've taken on during the week, you know, on, on Wednesday, I get the Bible study, but then on Sunday I get, you know, I, I actually get to hear the word. So I am so strengthened by that. And I want you to be strengthened by it too. And also tell someone that you love them because tomorrow is not promised. Today may be the only chance you get to say it. So I love you. I hope you love me back until the next time you hear my voice. God bless you and goodbye. Mm-hmm.
Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you.